Thousands of white workers stage a strike in South Africa. They're angry their employer is giving company shares exclusively to blacks. They say that's racist, discriminatory and unfair. But what constitutes fairness in the post-apartheid era? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I am Hashim Ahelbara. For the first time in South Africa's history, thousands of white union workers have staged a strike. They're furious their employer, one of the country's leading energy companies, has introduced a new share scheme which is only available to black workers. White workers say that's discriminatory and racially divisive. But their bosses at Sassel say the move's been backed by shareholders and meets rules designed for black economic empowerment, part of a drive to reverse decades of exclusion for blacks and the apartheid. The company wouldn't give us an interview, but on its website says it remains committed to engaging with all trade union partners to our guests in a moment. But first, Fahmida Miller reports from Sekunda. The new share scheme is infuriating Sassel's white employees because it only benefits their black colleagues. They don't say, we judge you on your contribution, your loyalty, your production. No, we judge you on the color of your skin. These workers say they're being discriminated against. Brian Fulton, who's worked at Sassel for 30 years, agrees. We bought a company working shift works and doing night shifts and 16-hour shifts, and, you know, and uh, I think it's unfair for us white people to be discluded from, from social shares. Banners in Afrikaans read, skin color does not determine my worth. But under apartheid, skin color did exactly that for decades, excluding non-white workers from most jobs. Sasa says its new share scheme is not about workers' benefits or pay. It's about empowering black workers through a share scheme that would allow them 25% ownership. But white workers here say the company is being racist and they want equality. Critics say that since 1995, only an elite group of blacks have benefited from economic empowerment. The World Bank says South Africa is one of the most unequal countries in the world, with poverty persistently high among black South Africans. The Trade Union Federation, Kasatu, says it will fight any resistance to transforming the economy. To wake up a quarter of a century later and have these very same people who were previously beneficiaries of job preservation aims. They're lamenting about a policy that is trying to redress the imbalances of the past. It's beyond mischievous. And we think an organization like Solidarity is really showing its true colors. Leaders of the Solidarity trade union say the share scheme will only worsen divisions between workers. And the union says if Sassel executives don't change their minds, complaints will be made to South Africa's Human Rights Commission and the United Nations. Famida Miller, Al Jazeera, Secunda, South Africa. Let's bring in our panel. Joining us in Johannesburg, Dirk Herman, who you just saw in the piece. He is the CEO of the Solidarity Trade Union. And from Cape Town, via Skype, Ralph Matega, lecturer at the University of Western Cape and author of Ramaphosa's Turn. Can Cyril Save South Africa? Also in Johannesburg, Dennis George, General Secretary of the Federation of Unions of South Africa. Welcome to you all. Mr. Herman, what's wrong with Cecil's share scheme that has prompted your anger and the shutdown? Sassel had a previous scheme in Zalo, and in Zalo actually included all workers. That scheme went underwater, and then they created a new scheme. And this scheme's name is 
Kanyisa, and Kanyisa suddenly exclude the white workers. So we sit here with a past of inclusion and then a future of exclusion, and that frustrates the word, workers. That frustrates them so that 89% of them voted in favor of a strike action. They said, well, enough is enough. We want our voice to be heard. And then they come here out in the masses striking and say to the world, this is how we feel, this is our frustrations. The positive of this, of course, mm -hmm. is that we are a democracy in making. So this is bringing balance again in the debate. Suddenly we talk again because what we say is absolute exclusion, simply on the base of the race, can mm -hmm. never be the future of South Africa. You've heard Mr. Herman uh, talking about the reason that prompted his uh, trade union to uh, to, to start the, the strike. Solidarity insists the attempt to introduce the uh, new share scheme is in violation of the mine charters that insist white workers should also be included in share schemes. Yeah. Look, uh, let me state a few basics about what I think is happening. Mm -hmm. And Sasol and Solidarity. We need to be quite clear. This is an affirmative action scheme that you can generally characterize as a measure aimed at advancing uh, the previously disadvantaged groups. And uh, from where Solidarity stands, it does make sense that Solidarity is actually raising questions by saying that uh, 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 Sasol's practice amount to unfair discrimination because it creates absolute exclusion of the white from benefiting from this scheme. Uh, and uh, I believe and from my reading here that uh, solidarity is actually standing also, not just on the mining charter, but I think that they, they will have to stand also on the basis of Section 9 of the Constitution, the right to equality, which says that no one can be uh, unfairly discriminated against. Equally, the very same section of equality in mm -hmm. our Constitution, which is Section 9, also provide explicitly that measures may be taken by government to advance those who have been uh, historically disadvantaged with the aim to actually uh, bring them to a position okay. where they can enjoy the right to equality. So all of these are provided for in the constitution. What I think needs to be done or what I think mm -hmm. is at the center of this, it is actually the balance and the extent to which uh, the measure that have been taken by Sasol actually violate the right mm -hmm. of those who are being excluded. A question needs to be asked as to whether are there other means that have been attempted I see your point. to bring about these policy goals mm -hmm. before this measure can actually be undertaken. That is the balance that needs to be retained. I'll Let, come back as to okay. what do I think about the decision we will by, go into by details too much. throughout the show. Let me now include Dennis George. Mr. George, you represent another uh, trade union, which is the Federation of Unions of South Africa. How do you see the share scheme? Yeah, look from our point of view, our constitution is quite clear that the rights can be limited from certain groups who have benefited in the past through job reservations to different kinds of advancement by the state, which have caused South Africa to be one of the most unequal societies in the world. We also find today that many of black people, you know, still find themselves in questioning the situation. That's the reason why we support the measures that Sasol is taking to empower black workers and more companies should do so in the future because workers that have benefited in the past to discrimination against black people want now to shout the same language that they must benefit again. And by that manner, we're never gonna address the inequalities in our country. And for us, the situation that Cecil is taking is correct mm -hmm. measure. Um, and for us, we believe that the situation of solidarity is totally out of, out of order and out of question. Mm -hmm. Mr. Herman, I mean, the counter argument to what you have been saying earlier is basically what the government or what Cecil is trying to do is reverse a situation that has been prevailing for decades. White workers, benefited from the system in the 60s and the 70s. Millions of Africans suffered under apartheid. It's about high time to redress that situation, yet you seem to be upset. That's not in um, uh, question here. The fact of the matter is South Africa has imbalances because of the past, a past that excluded a specific group of workers. Mm. And that must be addressed. And South Africa has several instruments in place 
to address that. Like, for instance, an affirmative action program that helps with promotions and also then appointments um, in the workplace. And Sasol has a very aggressive affirmative action program, and that brought about a lot of equality in the workplace and transformation within the workplace. But this goes too far, because this is about shared ownership. And suddenly, you say to a specific group of workers, in this place, your white working class people, it's people in blue overalls. That's not rich people. That's not people in management, it stops execs and, and etc. And you say to them, you can't be part of the ownership of this. And they were never part of an ownership scheme at all in their lives. What we sit now in Sassol at this stage, we mm -hmm. sit with a shared ownership scheme of top execs. Just yesterday, 106 million rand worth of share value um, options is awarded to the 15 top people in um, Sassol. And the interesting th fact is that is inclusive of all races. Nobody is arguing that. They exclude the white workers. Then they bring in the black workers as well as part of owners. The only group in the whole of Sassel mm -hmm. is the blue-collar white workers are not part of Sassel. And that goes too far. And that is what led the, okay. to the feelings of alienation, feelings that we are not owners, and feelings of frustration. Matega, interesting times in South Africa. The outcry over the issue of the share ownership and also the debate which is ongoing about the land reform and the expropriation that has been advanced by the ANC. Is this interconnected? I do believe there are links thereof because at the center of this, I mean, as a scholar, where I stand is that uh, you cannot apply policy arbitrarily. You cannot just apply policy on the basis that it satisfies the majority. Of course, the essence of policy should be to satisfy the majority, but you cannot arbitrarily uh, uh, actually violate the right of the minorities. And the policy implementation environment in South Africa is such that there are so much tensions within the policy that uh, there seems to be an idea of majoritarianism. And I think there is no willingness where I stand uh, uh, to actually justify some of the policy uh, prerogatives. And I have to say that, uh, I mean, I've looked at many of these cases involving affirmative action, mm -hmm. many of these cases, such as the one in Sasol. There was another interesting case in the past where government had actually shaped a pension scheme on the basis of race as well, involving members of parliament. In all these cases, the biggest problem is that South Africa is not willing to have a conversation on affirmative action. The problem is that you have two extremes. There are those who are saying mm -hmm. you must get rid of affirmative action and those who are saying that you must apply it without being worried about how it affects the minorities. So this does not work in the, uh, uh, the, the, the principle and the spirit of the constitution that we have. Government has to justify its policy. And I have to say here, after looking at many cases, this is the first case that I'm seeing where actually a trade union, before they go to court, because most of these cases end up with affirmative action measures being challenged, mm -hmm. in court. And I have to say, 80% of the time, government affirmative action programs fail in court, because not because affirmative action is bad, because they are poorly formulated, because there is no consultation okay. on those policies. Mr. Mr. George, I would like to ask you a question about whether the debate that we see now in South Africa sheds light about the problems that the country faces, particularly when it comes to the black economic empowerment. What do you think should be done now by the government to try to sort out these problems? Yeah, you see, there's been from the beginning, after we have um, negotiated this agreement and legislation in NETLAC, there's been massive resistance, specifically in the private sector, um, of not implementing the employment equity targets. We've also seen that many excuses have been there. And that is the reason why the trade unions in, in NETLAC, uh, specifically for DUSA, we believe it is important that we need to get over this particular matter and that we must in, uh, implement um, the employment equity legislation and the black economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. Because if a person look at the situation of black people in South Africa, then we will also see that they are the most disadvantaged people in this country. And it is very important for us to implement these legislations and to make sure that we address the massive issue of inequality in the country. Mm -hmm. Mr. Herman, uh, workers are workers in every company all over the world. But we're talking about one of the most unequal societies in the world, South Africa. And you know that there is this need to try to 
redress a situation and particularly the wealth imbalance in South Africa. So if you're not happy with the uh, share ownership, what do you think should be the option to try to solve this problem? Workers are workers. You are quite correct about that. And the inequalities in South Africa is not between the workers in South Africa. In, in fact, is the workers on ground floor level are equal people working with good, good relationships. And what happens here is the moment that you divide the workers that actually are equal as workers on base of race, then you create new forms of tension. You don't address inequalities by dividing the workers. And this issue is actually resolved in, you mentioned in the beginning, in the um, draft mining charter of South Africa. And the draft mining charter, we had long, long, long discussions and, um, uh, on how to deal with this issue. And the resolution was of all role players, that's other trade unions, um, that was government, that was big business, etc., was that if it comes to shared ownership scheme, if it's about ownership, then all workers must be included because workers are workers. If you want to try to address inequalities in South Africa, then you must empower all workers. Then that will help. But it doesn't help to create in, um, inequalities between workers in South Africa because this is what's happening here. We don't talk about the top exec and the white elite here. We stand up for ordinary blue-collar workers. Matega, the... The need to address the disparities, the imbalances, the racial injustice in South Africa has been cardinal for the ANC, and particularly when it took power in 1994. But it seems that it has failed to deliver on the promises that it has been making for quite some time. Is it possible that the ANC now and that South Africa under Cyril Ramaphosa would be able to solve these social economic problems? I think there is a potential to solve uh, uh, the economic problems that we're having, uh, uh, inequality, deep inequalities. I, I think that we will not achieve much if we throw ultimatums at each other. And I'm talking about policy ultimatums. We cannot go, it is either my way or the highway. And those who are resisting some of the policies that are based on social justice also need to understand that it is an untenable for them to enjoy life in a society that is uh, uh, very, very unequal. Mr. George, I would just like to include George on this particular issue, which is the black economic empowerment uh, has been going on for quite some time, but many say that it has benefited only a few portion of the affected society. Well, what is the problem here? Is this an issue of bureaucracy, corruption, or inefficiency from the, from the part of the government? Yeah, look, the whole situation is this. You must now understand that the total economy in South Africa before 1994 was totally controlled by the white people in South Africa. And what the state is trying to do is through their procurement instruments is to procure from black people to make sure that we make black people part of the mainstream economy of the country. I mean, my father and I grew up under apartheid. You know, we could have brought somebody from Scotland or from Portugal, and that person would have been allowed to open up a business in Cape Town, in the main street of Atlee Street. But when a black person wanted to open up a business, the legislation in this country prohibited. I, for a person myself, was never allowed to apply for any specific job because in the advertisement, it specifically told you that job is for white people only and you're not even allowed to apply for a position. And today, when a democratically elected government mm -hmm. wants to affirm black people, then you get lots of academics and people like Mr. Dirk Herman that want to stand on the rooftops and want to shout. It is unfair, but unfortunately for them, the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa makes provision for the empowerment and for positive discrimination in order mm. to address the injustice of the past. Mr. Herman, I mean, in theory, if you look at the whole rationale behind the share ownership, land redistribution, it basically says that if companies meet government quotas on black ownership, if we can redistribute land to the poor, that could boost the economy the same way it did for countries like 
Japan and South Africa and South and uh, South Korea back in the 80s and the 70s. So why wouldn't we implement the same model for a country like South Africa? Yes, <clears throat> we are quite positive about the idea of empowering workers. We are also positive about the idea of empowering black workers and to give them shares within the company. We just can't understand why in that same logic you must say that white workers must be excluded to empower and include black workers. Ralph said in the beginning a very important word, and he used the word, word balance. And that is what we must seek in South Africa. If you listen uh, at, at everything um, that Dennis said of exclusion of a previous system, then the answer for the new system is not exclusion again. The fact of the matter is we must have nuanced approaches. And if we look at the constitution that you also referred to, the constitution make it also very clear through the words of the Human Rights Commission in South Africa that equality can't be a race-only system. The uh, Human Rights Commission of South Africa said just last week in the report what we need is a nuanced in, uh, approach. We need to be context sensitive mm -hmm. and um, we must not use race as the only criteria. And the Human Rights Commission um, criticize the current race classification um, that is used in South Africa. And what Sassel here is do, do is uh, absolutely race. The pendulum swung too far in the Sassel example. And the protests of solidarity bring about balance back into the parameters of the Constitution. Okay. Mr. Matega, how much of this whole debate about the... Uh, the... Uh, share scheme and also land redistribution is genuine how much of it is politically motivated because on the other uh, uh, end of the debate you have people saying that Cyril Ramaphosa is using the issue to try to prevent his rival breakaway group the economic freedom fighters from winning the elections uh, in the next year uh, I think that these issues need to be thought about beyond the tension of the elections. The elections, uh, the period leading to the election, do not really make a good environment for discussion of issues such as this, which are uh, very, very delicate. And I do think that uh, Mr. Ramaphosa's leadership, he needs to be thinking in a long term mm -hmm. as to how do you actually consult with different groups in society when it comes to policy. I mean, okay. I, I, I fully understand where my two colleagues come from. I do think, however, that uh, the most important thing in South Africa is actually to reinstate the importance of conversation as a process of policy. Okay, George. Uh, Mr. George, do you think that uh, amending the Section 25 of the Constitution to pave the way for the expropriation of the land without compensation, as has been now uh, suggested by Cyril Ramaphosa, could be uh, the best option to try to sort out some of the simmering discontent in South Africa? Yeah, look, the situation is Parliament is currently with a committee busy with consulting various stakeholders how to address the situation. And I think there's a, some con consensus emerging that it's not only just the amendment of the Constitution, but it's also about practical measures how black um, emerging farmers should be supported. And I must say that we are very encouraged by um, Agri South Africa that have put forward you know, proposals and also a plead with government to put funding on the table. So what we want to see is a much more stronger uh, agricultural uh, uh, sector that can contribute towards the economy, but also to ensure that more black people are part of the agricultural sector in South Africa. And on that note, we'll have to wrap up our show. Dennis George, Ralph Matega, Dirk Herman, thank you very much indeed for being present on the programme today and thank you too for watching you can see the program again anytime by visiting our website aljazeera.com for further discussion go to our facebook page that's facebook.com forward slash aj inside story you can also join the conversation on twitter our handle is at aj inside story from me hashem the whole team here bye for now